This detective can solve any crime, if you give him enough treats. Hello everybody, I'm Lavis, and the SCP I'm going to tell you about today is SCP-ES-234, Detective Maru, Private Eye. Let's begin. Item number, SCP-ES-234. Object Class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. Due to the nature of SCP-ES-234, containment protocol is focused on voluntary housing of the instance in Site-34 facilities. It has been provided with a modified humanoid containment cell equipped for housing a small feline. Note, although the cell has a litter box, the instance has shown a preference for using the toilet present in the chamber. The instance should receive standard small cat food three times a day, plus snacks as a reward for collaboration in interviews and experimental procedures. Additionally, a maximum of 30 grams per week of dehydrated nepeticotteria, also known as catnip or catmint, will be provided, having to distribute its use in a minimum period of 5 days per week, not being authorized under any circumstance the delivery of additional quantities. SCP-ES-234 must interact with personnel participating in the project at least once a day, and must receive veterinary evaluation once every two months. All interactions must be recorded by video or audio recorders. In order to limit its exposure to the outside world, it will be allowed to travel through certain sections of Site-34, and this travel must be discreetly supervised by personnel participating in the project. In order to prevent it from accessing restricted areas or areas that pose a danger to its own physical, psychological, or ontological integrity or that of staff members. In the event of a Callejero incident, the level of surveillance in the media and on the internet will be increased in order to search for mentions of uncontrolled noir events, and response teams will be sent to recover SCP-ES-234 and distribute amnestics to the witnesses, disseminating the corresponding cover stories. At present, the aim is to reduce uncontrolled noir events through the application of the Maltese Falcon Protocol. For further details, see Addendum ES-234-1. Efforts continue to be made to establish the origin of the information obtained and mentioned by SCP-ES-234, as well as possible uses for it. Description SCP-ES-234 corresponds to a conceptual ontogeneric gestalt entity, which is defined as an entity whose observable characteristics are partially the result of the perception and consciousness of the observer of variable appearance, which is currently perceived as a specimen of a male adult domestic cat of approximately five years of age. The most notable anomalous characteristics observed in this entity correspond to its capacity for bipedal locomotion and speech. The examinations carried out at the time have not allowed us to find any notable anatomical differences in relation to non-abnormal specimens of domestic house cats which could explain these capacities. The use of human clothing, typically a raincoat and a dark grey hat, has also been observed. According to testimonies obtained from subjects who have interacted with SCP-ES-234, the entity would be able to obtain information related to its interlocutor, either of a personal nature or in relation to problems that affect them in other areas, information that they make known during the conversation on many occasions outside a clear context. The mechanism through which SCP-ES-234 would obtain the information has not yet been identified. Note, when asked how it obtains information, SCP-ES-234 simply says that, quote, it is thanks to his detective skills, and quote, that a good investigator never betrays his sources. A secondary property associated with this entity is a phenomenon with ontokinetic characteristics called a noir event. During this event, an area of 10 square meters around the entity is affected, registering a notorious chromatic alteration in the objects and people present in the place being their characteristic colors replaced by different tonalities of white, black, and gray, registering also a decrease in the level of luminosity present in the place. In addition, alterations in the clothing, language, and mannerisms of the subjects have been observed inside the area affected by the phenomenon, becoming anachronistic and consistent with those used by SCP-ES-234 during this event, which will revert to normal characteristics once the phenomenon is over. Note, they are similar in style to those used in films of the 1940s and in American-made television series in the 1950s and 1960s. SCP-ES-234 has repeatedly stated that it does not know the cause of this phenomenon or the reasons that trigger it. Addendum 1. 
Callejero incidents and the establishment of Protocol Maltese Falcon. The Foundation learned about SCP-ES-234 after a series of reports about the presence of the entity in barracks and scenes of police investigations in the city of After the initial contact was established, it was contained, and the cover story was spread that the events observed corresponded to the recording of a television series, The Cat Detective, and amnestics were distributed among the subjects directly involved. Although SCP-ES-234 had voluntarily agreed to stay at the Foundation's facilities, Security personnel reported in the weeks following their entry successive breaches of containment by the entity. Returning to the facilities after a period of one to three days, attending <laughs> noir events outside the facilities of the Foundation. Apparently, these breaches are not due to an abnormal capacity, but simply to the small size and dexterity of the entity. These breaches were called Callejero events. When the entity was interviewed about the reason for these escapes and, consequently, non-compliance with the agreement established by the Foundation, SCP-ES-234 limited itself to mentioning that, quote, I cannot fail to comply with my detective duties. Crime never rests, and neither can I. Further mentioning that, quote, I was not born to be a pencil pusher. It was in the streets and not behind a desk, where clues were obtained and crimes were solved. In response to these events, the Maltese Falcon Protocol was established in collaboration with the Disinformation Department. SCP-ES-234 was informed that, as of <laughs> it would work in collaboration with the research agency S, P, and C Associates. For the execution of this protocol, personnel from the Foundation in collaboration with external agents carry out representations of police cases, allowing the entity to partake in the investigative process. Thanks to the establishment of this protocol, the incidence of uncontrolled noir events was reduced by 80%. Addendum 2. Interview with SCP-ES-234 Interviewee, SCP-ES-234 Interviewer, Dr. Borja Dowell, member of the Regional Ethics Committee Preamble This record corresponds to the transcript of one of the interviews conducted with SCP-ES-234 in the context of searching for information about the source of its anomalous properties. It can be highlighted that, during the development of the interview, a noir event occurred. Good morning, SCP-ES-234. I'm Borja Dowell. I've come to interview as part of a process of general evaluation of abnormal subjects housed in this place. Morning, Dowell. Not worried about talking to a talking cat? Seems not. You must know others like me. What was I called in for today? A new job from SP and C? I could really use it. I've been so bored these last few days. You come here for information? Seems like that's all they need me for these days. If it's about that file you've been looking for since last week, file ES1620501 is in the possession of researcher Mondragon, who requested it a couple months ago from your assistant Perez who was transferred a month ago, after which he forgot to inform you. But thanks, I guess. I'll check back with you later. Since you mentioned it, tell me, how'd you know? It's simple logic, my dear Dowell. Since from what I've been able to find out the last few months, you, as members of every respectable research group, never allow your folders to leave this place consequently. And associating the area of work with which the file is related, Mondragon was the most likely candidate to have it in his possession. Not to mention that you changed your assistant in the last month, so it's very likely that your new assistant had no knowledge about that loan. On another subject, SCP-ES-234, do you have any idea how long you've had these capabilities? Are you referring to my detective skills, or being a talking cat? Since I remember, it has always been like that. In the litter, we were five, three males and two females. We talked among ourselves with our mother, a beautiful calico. We lived happily until that day. What happened on that day? That's when I lost two of my brothers. They were kidnapped and we never heard from them again. It was after that day, without heeding my mother's pleas, that I took to the streets. First in search of them, and then seeking to prevent the same thing from happening to others. I always get sad when I tell this. Now, with your permission, I need a cigarette. I know they're a bad habit, but they help me to relax and concentrate. SCP-ES-234 pulls out a small silver cigarette case from the inside pocket of its jacket and takes out a cigarette, lighting it with a small golden lighter. These cigarettes are composed of nepeta, 
Authorities have expressed the entity possesses a strong dependence on their consumption and fear of the consequences of quitting, and so it has been allowed to continue with their use. SCP-ES-234 lights another cigarette. Dowell takes out a pack of Marlboro cigars from his raincoat and starts smoking. They both remain smoking in silence for one minute, after which SCP-ES-234 starts talking again. Hey, Dowell. I have something to ask you. What happened to the Rusky? I was hoping to see him today. What Rusky? Russian? You mean Antonov? I think even though his last name sounds Russian, he's actually of Polish or Ukrainian descent. Rusky, Polish, that's irrelevant. They're all- Insult censored. At least he's not a commie. Whatever. I don't trust Ruskies, but he was an exception. I was hoping to see him, but I'll have to tell you first. Don't trust South Americans. Excuse me? SCP-ES-234. That's right. Watch out for the South Americans. They're playing a double game. And please, stop calling me that. My name is Maru. The entity continues to smoke in silence for a few minutes, after which the noir event ends. Note. The information relating to file ES-162-0501 was confirmed shortly after the end of the interview. Addendum 3. Pan Incident. On February 10th, 2020, SCP-ES-234 started a new Callejero event, losing contact with Foundation staff until February 15th, 2020, being found with medium-severe injuries inside a church in Later, the instance returned, only to appear in another Callejero event, achieving its recovery on March 5th, 2020, along with obtaining Redacted. As a result of this event, the security levels of SCP-ES-234's containment unit were increased, and several of the privileges previously obtained were also revoked. Addendum 4. Further communications in relation to SCP-ES-234. Date, March 12th, 2020. To Borja Dowell, from Director J Just as it is undeniable that SCP-ES-234's attitude has been problematic on multiple occasions, so has its usefulness, providing us with information of some value on several occasions. And I cannot fail to mention that, as unorthodox as its methods were, they allowed us to obtain Redacted. after the Pan Incident. Consequently, if we cannot suppress their hunting impulses, their inexhaustible curiosity, and their desire to investigate and collaborate, why not channel them? I understand that the entity is clearly anomalous and that we still don't know much about its nature, it's a cat that thinks it's a detective. Something that we see in that way. However, is our rejection of the incomprehensible so much that we are willing to simply throw it at the bottom of a box and forget it? Furthermore, by giving it a special status and greater participation in the activities of the site, we would diminish the chances that one day it will simply not return. Or even worse, that it will be made public or fall into the hands of another organization. Date. March 30th, 2020. To Director from Borja Dowell. SCP-ES-234 being a thinking and non-hostile entity, it would be unfortunate to have it perform its termination. Moreover, there is so much we must learn about its nature. One aspect that the entity's own research team has tended to underestimate is its capacity to obtain information. Something that certainly, and even against SCP-ES-234's own beliefs, is not the result of its intellectual and research capacity. Many times, so many pieces are missing that it is practically impossible to obtain a valid deduction. Is it a kind of radio that captures information indiscriminately, or does it possess metacognitive characteristics that are even more difficult to characterize? The idea of the research agency S, P, and C fits so well with its personal vision of the reality of SCP-ES-234 that even with its abilities, it cannot reject it. Especially when it's experiencing a noir event and its paradigm is reduced to a crime novel. Although these events have been self-contained, with a limited scope and duration, what would happen if the entity got fed up with its transitions in existence and consequently decided on the occasion not to drag a building or a street into that novel scenario, but the entire world, or worse still, not to allow us to return to what you know as our reality? I have discussed this scenario at length not only with members of the associated projects in the disinformation department, but also with experts in anomalous ontology and memetics. 
and together we have come up with a possible solution to offer you an alternative so attractive that it makes your idealized world of crime novels, mysterious crime scenes, tenacious cops, and mysterious blondes who break hearts dull and boring, depriving you of the desire to return. And what better option than our own work? We do not pursue simple criminals, but entities capable of murdering even concepts. We do not love mysterious blondes, but immortal guardian goddesses. For obvious reasons, we cannot give it an agent's position. However, assigning it Class E status and participation in specific tasks would be a good start. Date, April 1st, 2020. To Borgia Dowell. From Director D Dowell, even though this is absolutely crazy and has risks associated with it, I think it can work. Let's welcome Detective Maru to the team. Thank you very much for listening. If you like what you heard and want to hear more, you could click over here for another video I made, or you could click over here to subscribe. And if you have any other SCP ideas that you want to hear me read, please leave them in the comments below. Have a nice day.